questions or how oral questions the honourable leader of the opposition. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the 40 Liberal members are noting what Canadians know already. This Prime Minister is simply not worth the cost, the crime or the corruption. But those MPs are telling us that they need the Prime Minister's permission to speak at tomorrow's caucus meeting. So he will be able to muzzle them with regards to the doubling of our debt, of inflation, of housing costs and corruption. Will he allow freedom of expression for his MPs so that they can express themselves? So uh, the chair could not detect that this uh, question has to do with the administration of government. Uh, the right honourable prime minister. I think, Mr. Speaker, we see on voit très. We see very clearly once again that the leader of the opposition is should concern himself with his priorities. He's not, he doesn't care about Canadians' priorities. We're delivering for Canadians, for dental care, for pharmacare, for $10 a day daycare. The Conservative leader offers only cuts and austerity and political play. What we are going to do on this side of the House is work for Canadians and their well-being. Have... The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker. It's the Prime Minister who is distracted, distracting himself with political games because his own MPs, about 40 of them, have noted that he is simply not worth the cost, the crime or the corruption. They have lost their trust in this uh, Prime Minister. It's strange that the Quebec keeps voting for confidence in the government when the own government's members seem to no longer want to do so. Mem members should be able to express themselves freely. Will the Prime Minister stop muzzling them so that they can express themselves to say finally that the Prime Minister is not worth the cost or the crime? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Once again, Mr. Speaker, we see the point up to which the leader of the opposition is only working for his own partisan politics. He's not working for the well-being of Canadians. We are here to invest in pharmacare, for example, that will deliver insulin for free to those who need it. That will deliver contraception for women from coast to coast to coast. And the Conservative leader just wants to talk about politics. He wants to talk about the cuts that he will make in programs that Canadians need. We will be here for Canadians. Then I have Chef. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, we now learn there are about 40 Liberal MPs that believe that this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, crime and corruption. But there's this strange rule in the Liberal caucus that you need to have permission from the Prime Minister to speak at the microphone. So a Liberal MP wanted to get up and say quadrupling the carbon tax is a bad idea or doubling housing costs is making people homeless. They can't do it. Will the Prime Minister lift the gag so his Liberal MPs can say to his face that he's not worth the crime, the cost and the corruption? Hey. Once again in English, uh, None of these questions have to deal with the administration of government, but I see the, I, I see the order. I see that the Prime Minister is rising to his feet. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it seems that the Conservative leader is conf confusing rules that apply within his Conservative yeah. caucus uh, to rules that we have in the Liberal Party. But the reality is, Mr. Speaker, we see which point the Conservative leader is simply focused on playing politics and gaining power. Uh, that's why uh, he wants to talk about things uh, that are uh, not having to do with delivering for Canadians. He doesn't want to talk about the fact that close to a million Canadians uh, will be receiving dental care because of our Canadian dental program that he says doesn't even exist and that he's voted against every step of the way.
May I ask the honourable member from uh, Battle River Crowfoot uh, to please uh, not take not take the microphone when uh, when the speaker is up on his feet or when uh, other speakers who have been recognised by the speaker is taking the floor. The honourable leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, I'm sorry to have to bring up this terrible rule. It's just that Liberal backbench MPs are coming and talking to all of us yes. to yes. say that they're not allowed to speak to him. And they're wondering if I could perhaps pose some questions on their behalf. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I guess they can't get anywhere with the current Prime Minister, so they'd rather talk to the future common sense Conservative. Yeah. Instead of silencing his own MPs, will he let them get up to the mic tomorrow to tell him that he's not worth the cost, crime and corruption? Yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the reality is he can't administer the government because he's too busy fighting for his job after nine years, even if his MPs know it. He broke immigration, he doubled the debt, doubled housing costs, doubled crime, doubled the cost of living in a home. He wants to quadruple the carbon tax that's already forced two million people to a food bank, one in four kids to hunger, 25 percent of Canadians to poverty, Canadian food prices up 36 percent faster than in the States. Stats can says we have the biggest gap between rich and poor in our recorded history. His MPs know that he's broke the country. Will he call a carbon tax election so we can fix it? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition, like all, all of us in this House, know that Canadians are facing challenging times. His solution, however, uh, is to offer them cuts, is to offer them no programs that they can rely on, and to vote against things like dental care and pharmacare and investments in a green economy that is going to create jobs and careers long into the future. He wants to harm Canadians where we're focusing on delivering for them. He wants cuts to programs and services while we're busy investing in Canadians and their futures. That's the choice Canadians get to make. Yeah. 